Versailles was a gulf into which the labor of France poured its earnings, and it was never full. America, when it became known to Europeans, was, as it had long been, a scene of widespread revolution. Early on the next morning we reached Kansas, about 500 miles from the mouth of the Missouri. We were now arrived at the close of our solitary journeyings along the St. Joseph's Trail. Fort Leavenworth is in fact no fort, being without defensive works, except two blockhouses. Spanish civilization crushed the Indian. English civilization scorned and neglected him. French civilization embraced and cherished him. Here society is reduced to its original elements, the whole fabric of art and conventionality is struck rudely to pieces, and men find themselves suddenly brought back to the wants and resources of their original natures. America was still a land of wonder. The ancient spell still hung unbroken over the wild, vast world of mystery beyond the sea a land of romance, adventure, and gold. In one point the plan was fatally defective, since it involved the deadly enmity of a race whose character and whose power were as yet but ill understood dash the fiercest, boldest, most politic and most ambitious savages to whom the American forest has ever given birth. Art, industry, and commerce, so long crushed and overborne, were stirring into renewed life, and a crowd of adventurous men, nurtured in war and incapable of repose, must seek employment for their restless energies in fields of peaceful enterprise. Not a breath of air stirred over the free and open prairie, the clouds were like light piles of cotton, and where the blue sky was visible, it wore a hazy and languid aspect. Humanity, morality, decency, might be forgotten, but codfish must still be had for the use of the faithful in Lent and on fast days. It was a rich and gorgeous sunset, an American sunset, and the ruddy glow of the sky was reflected from some extensive pools of water among the shadowy copses in the meadow below. The most momentous and far-reaching question ever brought to issue on this continent was, shall France remain here, or shall she not? If any pale student, glued to his desk, here seek an apology for a way of life whose natural fruits is that pallid and emasculate scholarship of which New England has had too many examples, it will be far better that the sketch had not been written. For the student there is, in its season, no better place than the saddle, and no better companion than the rifle or the oar. We were in all four men with eight animals, for besides the spare horses led by Shaw and myself, an additional mule was driven along with us as a reserve in case of accident. Four men are missing, R, Sorrel, and two emigrants. They set out this morning after Buffalo, and have not yet made their appearance, whether killed or lost, we cannot tell. The growth of New England was a result of the aggregate efforts of a busy multitude, each in his narrow circle toiling for himself, to gather competence or wealth. The expansion of New France was the achievement of a gigantic ambition striving to grasp a continent. It was a vain attempt. France built its best colony on a principle of exclusion, and failed, England reversed the system, and succeeded. When America was first made known to Europe, 
the part assumed by France on the borders of that new world was peculiar, and is little recognized. While the Spaniard roamed sea and land, burning for achievement, red hot with bigotry and avarice, and while England, with soberer steps and a less dazzling result, followed in the path of discovery and gold hunting, it was from France that those barbarous shores first learned to serve the ends of peaceful commercial industry. We were now, as I before mentioned, upon this St. Joseph's Trail. It was evident, by the traces, that large parties were a few days in advance of us, and as we too supposed them to be Mormons, we had some apprehension of interruption. In the middle of the 16th century, Spain was the incubus of Europe. Gloomy and portentous, she chilled the world with her baneful shadow. The young nobles, of whom there were many, were volunteers, who had paid their own expenses in expectation of a golden harvest, and they chafed in impatience and disgust. The religious element in the colony unlike the former Huguenot emigration to Brazil was evidently subordinate. The adventurers thought more of their fortunes than of their faith. Our New England climate is mild and equable compared with that of the Platte. Many of the Iroquois and Huron houses were of similar construction, the partitions being at the sides only, leaving a wide passage down the middle of the house. 